Hi, my name is Paul from High School Physics Explained and today I'm going to be discussing how you can derive the equations of motion using the graphical method. In other words, from graphical analysis. So stay tuned. Now before we start, let's quickly review what the graphs in terms of kinematics look like. And we're going to look again at three situations where an object is stationary, an object is moving at a constant velocity, and an object is moving at a constant acceleration. That is, the velocity is changing at a constant rate. And we're going to be looking really only at the displacement and velocity time graphs, because the acceleration time graphs are dead easy, they're all going to be flat lines, and really that's all we're interested in, where situations where the acceleration is a constant value. So basically we have our displacement time graphs and our velocity time graphs and I'm going to draw a complete set for our three situations. So if you remember then if we have an object that is stationary then the displacement is a flat line and that can be in any position because we don't know exactly what its displacement is at any point. Its velocity however is always going to be equal to zero. In terms of a constant velocity, we're going to get a straight non-flat line. So in other words, we have the slope, and the slope, of course, is the actual velocity in that situation. Now that, of course, can be meaning that we have velocity like this, or a velocity going down like this. But the critical thing here is, is that these are linear, because we have a constant rate of change of displacement, and that's velocity. In each of these cases, we have different velocities like so, and we can of course have a negative one as well, but the key here is, is the velocity is constant, so we're going to get a horizontal line. And finally, we have a situation where the displacement is changing at an accelerated rate, so we, we have, in this case, an acceleration, and so in that case you get your classic parabola like so. That parabola of course doesn't have to start here, it can actually go down like this and up. It can also do this, and in each of those cases you might get a velocity, for example, that may be a velocity that looks like this, you may get a velocity that looks like this, or you may get a velocity that goes in the other direction like so. But an critical thing here is, is that in all accelerated situations we have a constant linear relationship here, that the slope here is the acceleration. So therefore we now given an overview of our graphs that we're going to be looking at. Now in order to actually look at the equations of motions using a graph, we're going to only deal with one type of graph, and that is our velocity time graph, and I'm going to deliberately place our initial velocity at a non-zero value, and I'm going to have a constant acceleration that is a positive acceleration like so. Now I can do this in any other forms of velocity time graphs, but this will suffice for us today. Now we need to label a couple of things over here. We know that we have an initial velocity here, we also have a final velocity which is going to be our v up here, and finally we need our time which is the time it takes to go from there to there, this velocity to that velocity. So now let's start looking at the equations of motion. So as I said, the first thing is, is that the acceleration is determined by the slope of that line. And to determine the slope, it's the rise over the run. So in other words, it's this value here over this value here. Now it's pretty clear that this total value is v, this is u, so therefore the slope, the rise over the run, is v minus u over the run, which is t. And of course that is equal to our acceleration. If I rearrange that, I get my first equation of motion, and it's often written like this. I have v equals u plus a t. So there is our first equation of motion. How do we get our second equation of motion? So I'm going to stay with the same graph, but now the critical thing to understand is that not only can we work out the acceleration in a velocity time graph, we can work out the displacement. And the displacement is simply the area underneath the curve. So this area here is the displacement, because displacement generally is velocity to times time, and that's the y-axis multiplied by the x-axis. Now, if I now divide that area up into two components, you can see I have a lovely rectangle here and a triangle up the top, and that's the key to help us to determine the second equation of motion. So my displacement is going to be equal to the first area, which is simply u multiplied by t. That's that uh, rectangle right there. 
My second part is that triangle here, and in this case, I have this section, and we already established that's V minus U. That's the height here. The run here, or our base in terms of our triangle, is simply the time, but of course, we have a triangle, so this is over two. But what's V minus U? If you look carefully for my first equation of motion, my V minus U is simply AT. So I can now replace the V minus U with AT. So I get U, T, plus, now what I have is AT multiplied by T over two. And if you can see, I now get UT plus a half AT squared. And now I have my second equation of motion, which is S is equal to UT plus a half AT squared. That's a second equation of motion. Now, what about our third equation of motion? We're gonna still examine it in terms of the area under the graph, but I now want you to see that my area can also be seen as this lovely trapezium here, and that's our key. So our S is going to be here. Now, our area of a trapezium is A plus B, that is the top bit the, plus the bottom bit, multiplied by the height, which in this case is T, if you flip this around, over two. So I have this bit, which is U, I have this bit, which is V. I then multiplied by the height, which is T, and then I divide the lot by two. Now, that's our actual third equation of motion. I have S is equal to U plus V over two multiplied by T. And if actually, if you're clever enough, you can see that this actually means, in the case of constant acceleration, the average velocity, and if you remember, Average velocity multiplied by time is equal to the displacement. That's in a little side. Let's move on. How can I now use this to work out our fourth equation of motion? And in this case, I'm going to want to get rid of T. Now again, I'm going to use this first equation of motion to solve that. So we know that T is going to be rearranged V minus U over A. If I substitute that in, I get S is equal to U plus V multiplied by V minus U all over A. Now, what's U plus V multiplied by V minus U? If I rearrange this U plus V into V plus U, it makes a bit more sense. So I have V plus U, V minus U. Notice that, it's a difference of two squares. And so now I have V squared minus U squared over A, and that is equal to S. Now again, this is often rearranged, and when it's rearranged, we usually make V squared our subject. So we get V squared is equal to U squared plus two AS. There is our fourth equation of motion. Now, what about the fifth equation of motion? Why do we need a fifth? Well, let's have a quick look at these equations of motion. In all of our equations of motion, the key here is, is that you have a total of five variables, V, U, A, and S, and T. But in all of them, you're only given four, which means you need three to work out the remaining fourth one that you have there. But in each of the equations of motion, you have one variable that's not used. So if you look here, there is no S. If you look here, there's no V. If you look here, there's no A. And here, finally, we have no T. So clearly, there must be an equation of motion that doesn't have a V, and it exists. And the key is to see that this relationship and this relationship here can, can be combined to uh, isolate V out of it. Can you work it out? Well, if you do the math, do the simple arrangement, you end up getting an equation of motion that looks very similar to that second equation of motion. And that second equation of motion is simply S, looks the same. Now we have VT minus a half AT squared. So there's our fifth equation of motion. Now, rarely you'll see this in questions. Most questions start with an initial velocity, which means you're usually dealing with these equations. And in fact, in my experience, in many textbooks, they usually only provide or discuss predominantly this equation, the first one, the second one, and the fourth one. But you can use this one and this one as well, if that's the data that you're given. So there are our five equations of motion. We used our velocity time graph, to derive them. I hope that's helped you. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that bell so that you get my latest updates for my latest videos. Press like if this video has been helpful and by all means put a comment down below if the video has been particularly useful for you. 
Anyways, take care and good luck with your physics studies. Bye for now.